Okay, so good morning. Uh, for those of you who know me, I'm a marine plant ecologist, and I'm going to try to talk about environmental education, which is not my field. But uh, <laughs> why, why am I doing this? Uh, <laughs> I'll explain it. <laughs> I'll try. Well, as uh, you probably saw, Carmen yesterday, he, she talked about a um, research project we have on ecosystem services of the of the um, we have Formosa Lagoon, which is an important uh, lagoon in southern Portugal. And over there, yes, we are doing the science. So we are quantifying the ecosystem services. We are modeling. We are, will do simulations, and we want that this science will be uh, useful for conservation and management. But unfortunately, the, the, my experience is that science is, it, we have to do some other things because this is probably not enough. So that's what we did. We tried to set up this uh, network, this uh, regional network on ecosystem services. And so we are targeting professors and and uh, the, the students, so teachers and students, and we are following the advice of the previous speaker. We are trying to to uh, teach the teach the teachers, meaning to train the teachers and to give them this new look at the coastal services, this new look on the ecosystem services, which is something that they don't know. Uh, and the final goal is conservation and management. So we want to, to reach this through teachers and through the child and then to the adults. Okay, so we are in southern Portugal here. And southern Portugal, we have many uh, coastal, coastal ecosystems like lagoons and estuaries, which have, you know, vegetative habitats, including seagrasses. Uh, so what are the objectives of, uh, of this? This is the project, it's named REAS, which is Environmental Education Network for Ecosystem Services. So this is a network of institutions, uh, of scientific research like CCMR, me and Carmen are from CCMR, but education institutions like schools, science outreach uh, institutions, and environmental NGOs. So we, we want to do this network uh, with the aims to develop environmental education projects in the area of ecosystem services and particularly focused on what we know, which is vegetated ecosystems, so including salt marshes and seagrasses. So what are the objectives, the specific objectives? So the first one is to provide capacity building. So we want to train school teachers and also environmental managers in order to, pro to, to promote this perspective of scientific knowledge on the services. So what are the benefits of coastal systems for human well-being? Um, so the other objective is to develop uh, an incubator of projects. So an incubator of a project is a physical place where people can, that the schools can use and we have, with scientific support. So what's missing on the previous talk is the scientific support, support. So that's what we want to do. We want to give the scientific support to develop projects that can be done in the schools, in the local schools. Um, <coughs> Another objective is to raise awareness of the students, but not only the students, but the general public. And finally, we launched a specific uh, citizen science project uh, focused on the blue carbon stocks of these coastal ecosystems. Okay, so I'm going to show you several slides with some uh, numbers of people that we have reached. So this project, uh, REAS, started in November 2017, so it doesn't have a, a year yet. Uh, we already provided four 
training courses for teachers, uh, training courses on ecosystem services, and these training courses reached 60 teachers of several uh, levels of education, and also uh, environmental uh, technicians. So technicians, people that work on environmental departments, for example, at the natural park of Rio Formosa Lagoon, uh, we had uh, technicians uh, involved in, this, uh, in these courses. And also, uh, because there's, this, uh, there's a high pressure and high utilization of these coastal systems, as you know, uh, we are also focusing on the stakeholder. For example, the, the ecotourism organization, ecotourism uh, companies that work, and for example, like uh, this, that take tourists out of, into the system. So we did some, uh, we did one, until now, one uh, stakeholder workshop uh, involving two, 12, um, um, 12 of these uh, companies. This is a picture of uh, the incubator of ecosystem services projects, the incubator. This is a physical place in a school, a central school. Uh, that, uh, so we, we, we just uh, developed uh, and, and uh, bought the basic equipment to work on ecosystem services, including uh, equipment to, to perform uh, sediment analysis for to quantify the organic matter of the, of the sediments. So focus on blue carbon, but also computers and uh, microscopes. And we developed a, a toolkit for every professor that wants to develop uh, this kind of projects in, in, in the schools. We provide a basic kit to take out to the, to the field so that they have everything what's necessary to perform uh, work on blue carbon or description of the veg vegetation or analysis of the, of the, of the sediments, granulometry, etc. Okay, so this, uh, this is still some slides from some images from the, this uh, incubator of projects. We reached until now around 50 teachers. Uh, and 50 teachers, this number of children is probably uh, under-evaluated because if, if each teacher uh, deals with at least uh, 60, 60 students, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a much higher number here, which is around 3,000 uh, children has, has, been, uh, has been involved in this, in this project until now. This is an interesting thing that we did. Actually, uh, Katia Freitas, Katia Freitas is she did a master's with us on, on ecosystem services of seagrasses. Um, and she wrote a, she wrote a, a little story uh, about, it's called Formosa, uh, because of Rio Formosa Lagoon. And this story tells the kids the importance of seagrasses for the human well-being. And so she wrote the story, and then we, uh, we took uh, several classes of kids to the field. Um, Katia uh, did these uh, uh, lectures, theoretic, theoretical lectures, and brought this, the, the kids to the field, explained about seagrasses, showed them the biodiversity of seagrasses, explained the importance of seagrasses uh, for carbon, for everything, for all the ecosystem services they provide. And, and they, the kids, they draw, uh, images, and so this, this book is, 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 has drawings that were done by all these kids. So we have a, a couple of copies of the, of the book, it's in Portuguese, but if you want, you can ask uh, uh, Carmen for your, <laughs> for your copy. Uh, this is more images of, uh, of uh, <coughs> some um, games like table games that were developed by, 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 by schools. Uh, this is another example of the, this kind of project. So we, we can have different projects involved. We also did some uh, awareness uh, activities. We developed some uh, roll-ups with basic information on, the, on four main ecosystem services, like the carbon, carbon sequestration, biodiversity, 
support uh, ocean acidification, mitigation and uh, uh, mitigation uh, pH mitigation and uh, purification of the water. So we developed these uh, roll-ups and we are showing these roll-ups around in fairs, in, in, in shopping centers. And this is an example of, this is in Portuguese of course, this is an example of, uh, of the blue carbon, what's the blue carbon, how much blue carbon we have in our systems, etc. Uh, this is another kind of, uh, of uh, support that we, we used. This is a, an interactive exposition, uh, also on uh, explaining the ecosystem services of vegetation. Um, and yes, we are focusing on blue carbon. We have a specific project that it's, it's, it's being developed by many uh, professors now with, the, with their children and some people uh, take the, we, we, have, we give the support, the scientific support to this and uh, we, we go with the kids to the, to the field. Uh, we collect sediments. Uh, the, these sediments are taken into the lab. The organic matter is quantified. Also the, sorry, also the diversity linked to the, to the seagrasses or to the salt marsh. So different, different aspects of, of ecosystem services. Uh, we developed this uh, application that uh, can be downloaded to the mobile phones, to the smartphones. And you can include here pictures of the, of, uh, like the, when the kids go to, to the field, they can take the pictures. The pictures are downloaded directly into the, into the website. You can have the, the schools uh, uh, included in the, in the map and also the data that, uh, that are collected. And of course, this data is revised by us so that it can be uh, scientifically validated. And finally, I show you the website that we constructed uh, for this uh, project. You can consult it, it's still, <laughs> it's in Portuguese, uh, but uh, here we have all the explanation of what is ecosystem services. We have the blue carbon, we have a blog, a blue carbon where, where the, the data is included and the app you can download and uh, the entities that, that support this, uh, this project. Okay, thank you. Oh no, yes, sorry, <laughs> we, still have, we still have this, uh, uh, we have been disseminated in the media, in the radio, in the local newspapers, but also in the national newspapers, so I forgot this slide, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you now. Thank you very much, Rui. We've got about two minutes for questions, if anybody has anything to ask. Uh, Rui, in Elat, as you know, all the seagrass are subtitled. So we can't take kids or school teachers or no one can see the seagrass unless you snorkel a scuba dive. Yeah. So how do we take your amazing project and assimilate it in an environment where everything is underwater, deeper underwater even for... Well, we can use the salt marsh. We don't have a salt you marsh. You don't have a salt marsh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have mangroves, so it's a difficult one. Sorry? I know, I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You have to think about it. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> take them on a snorkeling tree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rui. No, it's an amazing project. I am still curious about how everything has started. And then I have another question. Where do you get funding and time to do all this? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, we got the project. Uh, actually, we applied for a, for a project. We, got, we, we were funded to do all this. And uh, yeah, well, time. I, I'm good in distributing job for everyone, <laughs> including my wife that is running part of the program. She's here, Elena. <laughs> and no, we, but we, yeah, we, we we got some money out of the project, so we paid the person to, to give the scientific support. Marcy is, is, is going out to the schools and taking the kids to, to the field. Yeah. Um, that, that's a really like, amazing project, but I actually had a comment for Gideon. <laughs> um, what we found is using virtual reality is very effective. 
uh, and there is a virtual reality workshop in the ISBW. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in seeing how you can take that underwater deep sea grass into the classroom, that's definitely one way to do it. And you don't need expensive equipment. You can use like the Google Viewer as well. So there's like very simple ways of like making it real for people, uh, you know, in the classrooms and stuff.